They laugh at me because I'm sworn to celibacy. But two weeks later, they are crying over the breakup with the person they just slept with, you see. I ain't too concerned about my popularity. So you can go ahead and mock me, but I won't be a participant of adolescent adultery, teenage polygamy, or pedestrian pornography, you see. My standards were set by a higher hierarchy of human philosophy. Divinity is held within my mentality. I will not settle for fly-by hormonal relationships or anything else used to soothe my flirtatious selfishness. I refuse to abuse, misuse, or reduce my time to entertain foolish fantasies, casualties, or what happens when you ride the love boat. So on an arc I'll float, even if it means that I have to go alone, because I know that any man that finds a wife finds a good thing. And even if that means I have to wait 30 years until I buy a ring, I will wait because her price is worth more than any diamond ring. You cannot rush perfect timing. And in due season, my work of waiting will produce a harvest. So while I'm waiting, I will harness the correct attributes of a godly husband. I will not ignore my intuition or lose sight of my godly position. I do not need to date countless girls to find the right one, nor do I have to go outside the faith. I will not succumb to lust or mistake it for love, but will earnestly seek the king. And in my diligence, he will reward my obedience. My conscience will not be scarred because of my negligence. My instruments will not be plagued with pestilence. My perseverance in this experience will qualify me for marriage's deliverance. I will align my ligaments to go the distance to find her excellence. They laugh at me because I'm sworn to celibacy. But what they don't know is God's plan for me.